you watching the semi-final round, you'll know that the result system uh, did die completely. Um, so we are out where well, we have no live results whatsoever. So Gaz and I are going to do our absolute best for you guys, and we're going to attempt, rightly or wrongly, um, against advice to try and score this one on the fly for you guys. But I this know, is... We actually have a score sheet here in the uh, studio, and... Um... Yeah, I've never used one before. <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as you've got a pen and paper, we'll yeah, be good. I've got a pen, I've got a bit of paper, and uh, I've got a little briefing of how to score this event. And, uh, yeah, we'll give it a go, and we'll try and keep you as informed as it is physically possible. Yeah, we do hope there's going to be a, a complicated system of pens and paper and bits of stuff being passed from the front of the wall to us. Uh, we will try and track every single attempt. Um, and ultimately, though, it's not easy to commentate, check facts and figures and do the scoring at the same time. So we will, ultimately, we're going to concentrate on the performances on the wall and the climbers that are being introduced now, six men and six women. You just see uh, Jesse Pils and Mia Karampel there, first of the Slovenians coming out there in the women's competition. Yannick the men's yeah. already on the, on the map. We've got Yannick Floe, Jan Luka Posh and Sergei Kapisko. <laughs> That's Greg cool. still coming around with his pillow. Yeah, I mentioned this before about the pillow we were taking selfies at, uh, at breakfast. And, uh, <laughs> this is not Gregor's pillow, I think. <laughs> He's nicked it. I think, it's from the, I think it's from the hotel we stayed in last night. But Someone um, must be paying him some money to come out with that. Well, the hotel do put quite a lot of effort into this event. They host all the athletes. They, uh, they put up with a, um, not really an after-comp party. It's more of a mid-comp sort of dance-off. Uh, that was last Dad night. And, Dad uh, off. We were staying on. Mike was on the fourth floor. I was on the fifth floor, and you could still hear the beat through the floors. <laughs> <laughs> really exciting to see young Slovenian coming out third tonight. Would be to see a Turkish, Turkish, excuse me. We just had a lesson from Ushka as to the Slovenian pronunciations, but it's here, Turkish. Really great to see the young 16-year-old. Just the Slovenian team, as uh, we talked about quite a bit there with Ruska, is just incredible. Luchka Rakovic joins her, along with Chloe Collier. And interestingly, if you did catch the semi-final stream, you'll see that Eddie came in to give us a bit of information that Chloe heard a significant noise, a bit of a crack and a pop in her bicep during uh, the semi-final round. But she has had it checked by a physio and she is going to compete tonight. So yeah, it's a, did, yeah, a really big effort there from Chloe. I did manage to have a quick chat with Chloe while she was getting some treatment off one of the Slovenian physios, and uh, he believes it's just a, um, a little bit of damage to, to the muscle. So hopefully it's not too serious. He's sort of given her the nod to um, carry on and compete. I'm sure she'll be very um, aware of she needs to take it easy and possibly pull out at the end of the day. We hope that's not going to be the case. I know she's got quite a bit of strapping on there as well, so hopefully she will be fine for the final. And uh, there we see the full lineup of the ladies. Yanya has just joined on the mat alongside Vadim Timonov, the two highest qualifiers from the semi final. The guys will be going into a bolder observation period here, so they have been in isolation, as you can see, running from back in the back area behind the curtain. They're going to go into bolder observation. Well, here we go then, guys. Boulder observations complete. Everyone's back into isolation. Our first climbers are coming out. Jesse Pills and Yannick Flurry. Really, really looking forward to this pre-IFSC season World Cup-style events. Absolutely stacked field. Yannick Flurry has just had an incredible 2019, of course. Jesse Pills is, you know, well, she's just been a dominant force in lead and Boulder now for, for a little bit. She's yeah, the young Yannick's been climbing very, very well. Only 20 years old, obviously. Hails from Germany, so he'll be very popular with this crowd. And it goes quickly for the one, two, three. First attempts are in the bag for both guys. Looks like we've got a dynamic start in both of the competitions, men's and women's. This, this left-hand side of the studio block wall, if you guys caught the 2019 men's semi-final, was all sorts of heartbreakers in there, in that corner. It's caused some trouble over the years, and there was the Yanya Boulder in the finals there last year. I think it was, was it Bond number four? Yeah. She did a classic Yanya move. There's plenty of those videos out there on the internet if you want to go and watch them. But uh, back to Jesse Pills. Oh, it does a nice little rollover in there, just a little one-two. Quite happy with it in the end. Sl really slowed it down, but let's see what she's got up against her on the 
top of this boulder. Managed to go all the way back down and round onto the right-hand side. It looks like a pretty horrendous mantle to finish. Well, Yannick tried to go from hold one to hold three there on the jump as well. A little bit too violent maybe for that method. But um, Jesse still on board. Mantling up on the zone. I think it needs to be this left foot. She doesn't look like she can quite span to the finishing hold. Oh, yes. well, that's an incredible She's save from Jesse Pills there. That was, that was all or nothing on that final attempt. Just as the left foot creeped up, he just about saved it. The double Gaston's to finish. Top in two attempts, zone in two attempts. Yannick just asking for a quick brush. See there, the green box flashes up. Yeah, Jesse Pills shoots straight to the top of the leaderboard. So only one climber to go. That's as you would expect. It looks like we do have some scores back on the screen. Let's hope it stays this way. That was a 1-2 from Yannick, straight onto the zone. Yeah, doubled onto the zone as well. Thinking outside the box a little bit here, just testing the root setter's minds a little bit, exploring all the options. It's not over, though. A huge press into this corner to finish. Really physical, brutal shoulder move. A little bit tricky to see from that angle. Maybe we can just bring it from the other side. It's a big push up into it. That's the nice finish there from Yannick Flo. He gets it done. He definitely, he's up for this one. Yeah, that was a really cool thing to witness there, working out that top move. How it worked for him was in the end, the swing, the kick, the land, the going to the press, into the shoulder press. And that was a strong top for Yannick in the end. Yannick missing out on the chance to go to the Olympics this year with those two German spots taken by Alex and Jan Hoyer. He'll be focusing just on the season itself. Mia Krampel joins us now in the women's. Jan Luca Posch in the men's. Yeah, Jan Luca Posch from Austria. Yeah, Mia's gone from 18th all the way through into this final, so came out of the qualifiers in 18th, had a, had a fantastic semi final round. You would expect her to improve on that position, start the, uh, the semis, and she certainly did that. So she's obviously on form. One four Slovenians in this final in the women's. Easy. So six in total. Six in total for the finals. Insane. Yeah, the coaches have got their work cut out. <laughs> Keeping an eye on six different climbers. So Mia Krampi, you can see quite a bit of tape there on the left fingers. Not too surprising, that's pretty much common throughout the kind of these top end competitions these days. So much skin being lost, especially in this qualification round here at the Studio Block Masters. And she find this push. It looks like a pretty horrendous push into the corner. Yannick on board the zone. It's an interesting leg position there from Jan Luca Posh. Gets it done though. I don't think we have a bit of terminology for that sort of leg position, to be honest. <laughs> I have no idea what he was doing there with his legs, but whatever it was, it worked. If in Good doubt, strong yeah, top. On board. Yeah, try and keep some body parts in contact with the wall, it always helps. Mia back on board. You can just see for those with the keen eyes, you've got those blockers in between the two triangles. I think the root setters just at the last minute were a bit worried that you could go down and cheat it, maybe put the foot in it, finger lock, something like that. But anyone yeah. wants to force Slide this, foot into force the crack this and move. Never come out again, I think. Yeah, Tom Randall style. So it's a little bit of a coordination jump out of this corner. She's really well on that first effort, but now she's taking a couple of goes just to try and repeat it. It's like a little spin out the corner. Yeah, so when she did it before, she did it super easy, and now it's just like every coordination move. It's not a good you can't sign. fight through a coordination move. It she is just... See the way happens. she's holding her finger there on the left hand. I think that's blood sport already, unfortunately. It's actually on the right hand. Not good. 
You don't want to be taping up mid boulder. You do see it quite a bit though. Just licks a finger, gets the chalk off, so she's got something to stick the tape to. Well, you, the Slovenians were using this yellow tape yesterday. I saw a few of them going in for it. Must be some special. special it will special be special yeah. secret knowledge tape. They'll have a secret up the sleeve, won't they? Yeah, it is the nature of the beast, not only with the, the modern style holds, but just the, the size of an event like this, where you're climbing at least a minimum of 20 boulders in qualification, probably more. And then uh, you do the semi final, and then you're out on the final. Well, she's back on anyway. That's better this time. Yeah, pretty fierce pounce across that time. Really kind of gave it to overpower jump out of the corner, which was a definite success. See how low she is. She's got to use the two same hand and foot holes and go from there all the way to the top of the wall. Right foot position is going to be absolutely crucial because that's what's stopping her pushing her weight over to the right hand side. Can she just jimmy that right foot along a bit or does she need it? Looks like she's pushing it out from there. Trying to wobble off at this point here. This is where we saw Jesse Pills just pounce for that finish hold as soon as that left foot touches. She's running out of time. Oh. It's not going to be for Mia Crample. Bit of a surprise there. Yeah, I think maybe with a little bit more time on the clock, she would have possibly done that top move and not suddenly decided to rush for the last minute. But yeah, she'll be a little bit disappointed with that, I think, in the end. I do wonder how much the tape is getting her down a bit there. The tape's now coming back off. She has to try and rebuild backstage. Can't grow skin that quickly, though, unfortunately. Sergei Depishko comes out now. And the young Slovenian is 16 years old. Lucia Tarkas. With a new face around him. Yeah, it's, it's and, and yet another, really. yeah, another Slovenian Maybe. making it through to an international final. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised. No. If you've got Slovenian in it's your just, passport, just you just seem to make finals. Normal, yeah. Sergei Depishko, then one of the probably the, the tallest athlete in the field from semi-finals and finals. See how he makes this jump. Oh, easy. <laughs> very, very easily. Even stopped midway in the triple. But easy into that top press as well. Also, you know, he is tall, yes, but he is also really down strong as yeah. well. He crushed that shoulder press on the last move. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, being tall is one thing, but you've got, you've got to have the minerals to go with it. Absolutely. Oh, that was nice. Good save there. Let's see her. Yeah, she looks like she's got good skin. She's got no, no tape on her fingers at the moment, so that definitely bodes well. But this press that is about to occur is pretty brutal from what we've seen. Flip this left arm over, get the elbow up. Nicely done there. Solid through that section. This is the moment then. Just got to kind of lean out into the overhanging wall. Oh, easy. Easiest attempt on that final move so far. Super impressive. That could be a name to watch out for in the 2020 se season. That was Lucia Tarkas from Slovenia. Another crush. It's amazing. Where do they keep bringing these climbers from? But it's it's the national sport. It's just the it's the norm in Slovenia. This is what you do. You get born, you climb for a few years on some like baby holds, and then you get <laughs> brought to the Slovenian team. The whole country's in the team, you know. Gregor's not bought his pillow with him. That's disappointing. Yeah. Luc Karakovic then and Gregor Vazonic, two Slovenians going side by side on this one. They're going to have known that tops have gone down pretty quickly here, so the pressure really starts to mount. Time backstage is really limited between one person going out and then your, it's your turn next. Let's go for both climbers there. Yeah, looks good. Not a great start. Not quite finding the right method, going to the first hole with the right hand, is to pedal all the way through. Gregor trying to go one, two, three. That's, That's better. better. Oh, she looks so composed. Luchka on the wall. 
And even looks like she's trying most of the time. Fierce and strong. Not just good on the bowlers, though. Just as she slips off there. That European lead champion took that title in Raffo. Back at the end of 2019, is Gregor. That was great from Gregor. Really had to dig in on that jump. Certainly no slouch with his win in Munich 2018. Such we know that he's got the beans. Fierce move on that jump into the finish hole shoulder. Yeah, he felt that. Just as he jumped into that, walks away wincing, holding his right shoulder a little bit. It's going to be all eyes on Lutschkin out. That's nicely done this time, really got that rotation down at the start. Yeah, very smooth through that. Now it's all about this press, though, dropping down. Positioning that right foot in the correct place, and then this brutal flip of the left shoulder and elbow around and above. You really feel like Lutschka is out to prove herself this year. That emotional battle that she had with Mia Krampel for that second Slovenian Olympic spot. Did end up going to Mia in the end, so you feel like She's got absolutely going to be gunning for this 2020 season. Can she push it out now? Can't reach the finish hold with her right hand from that position, so it does have to get the left foot up to establish a balance point that she can lean into the finish hold. Now she does. Superb, cool, calm, controlled. That is the style of Luchka. Absolutely awesome performance once again. Both bowlers doing a pretty good job here, racking up a few attempts, but ultimately it's getting done. Yeah, and... Um Great performance again by, by Luchka. Very smooth on the top section. Didn't really need to turn that right foot and drop the right knee to get the left on. Plenty of flexibility in the bank. Now, big man himself, Jernie Kruder. Always a crusher coming back from injury. He's uh, not 100%. I was chatting to him earlier on about the break in his arm. And he's still got pins and a couple of bars holding it together. But, um, Is that not cheating? Um, well, he's, he's weights up because of it, you know, he's got another <laughs> kilo and a half in his left arm, so give it a few months and it'll be super strong, that arm, carrying an added weight round. I'm a little bit worried about Chloe on this press move out in the zone. I mean, it's going to be a lot of force to go through that left arm, and that's the one you can see that she's got the taping on, it's strapped up. We shall see how it goes for it's Chloe. Not, it's not her first rodeo, though. She's going to know her body better than anybody else. So she won't risk a, a, a World Cup season. You wouldn't have thought us. Yone sticks the jump first time. He's got to pounce it now, or is he going to try and press it? It's really hard to read this last move from the ground. Oh, that's horrendous, that last move on the shoulder. Yeah, no pushes into it for the flash, though. Yeah. Attempts on that taking not much more than 40 seconds. Really, definitely looking strong and, as ever, psyched out of his mind. He absolutely loves being in places like this. Our first close look at Chloe on her block number one. It's a little spin, quite a nice, cool move out of the corner. Just try to... Go for the double to that second hole, slightly over-rotated. This move almost, it looks harder than it actually is, I think, by, by watching people on the wall. It seems like when they just dial it back a little bit and just try and float through that earlier section, it seems a little bit easier than possibly giving it the full, the full can of beans off, off the starting position. Yeah, I think as with any of these dynamic movements, it's quite hard to judge the amount of oomph you need to give it. Uh, sometimes we're a little bit slower, a little bit faster. It's quite hard to judge that. Was steady that time, went for the right hand, left hand up. Through it, no problem. Now, this is probably going to be the move coming up that is really going to challenge that left arm. You can see the heavy strapping she's got on there at the moment, so... Getting that elbow up and that arm straight locked out, showing the strength there very much. Easily through it. And she needs to get that left foot on. Find the balance. Just looking for something out of the arete there, just to help with the balance point. Doesn't need it in the end. A little double tap on the final hold. Nothing really to grab up there, just control by placing two hands over the top of the hold. 
Yeah, Rattling it's... through this first boulder really here. Top's coming thick and fast, just one rotation of climbers still to come. Hopefully she'll be quite happy with that performance then. Getting the top on the first boulder and still blocking away, being able to climb again. Always good. Here we go with the top qualifier, Vadim Timonov. First out. Andy Garnbrit joins Vadim. Let's see what she makes this groove, jump out the groove to start. Only climber to top all four boulders in the semi final, Yanya. Speaking to uh, Eddie actually from the circuit, saying that she was really annoyed that she didn't flash the boulder that she was the only person to do. Such is the spirit of Yanya. She's just absolutely tearing herself to shreds that she didn't do it first time. Does that move first time though? Paddock going for a one, two, three, four, five on that first attempt. A technical little push section on this boulder. So much pressure on Yanya's shoulders every time she comes out. Everybody just expects her just to cruise everything. And she yeah, does have to fight. The Rootsheads are making her work here. Oh, quick look down at the foot, and I think she was probably thinking in her own mind, have I got that foot high enough? And then went to do the move, and the foot shot off. It's almost a, a gasp of disbelief every time Yanya falls off. She is human after all. Vadim going for the one, two, three, four. Trying to use every volume. We've seen a lot of variations on this jump. It's quite a cool, cool little boulder, really. It's not just the same sequence that's working for everybody on it, even though it is a jump. Actual physical distance from the start holds to that big boss hold, the zone hold, is miles, and that him sticks it. It's so impressive. You do get the opportunity to come to an event like this, do just to see the route setting, see what these top end athletes are capable of. So you're going to try and mount it up as Yanya sticks the jump just in the background there again. And Timonov just trying to decide what to do at the end. Goes to the quick pounce into the shoulder. Nicely done. That was a cool last move. Really physical on the body. Yeah, we've seen that finish a couple of times in that round. That's a nice way to do it. Dynamic hop onto the right foot and up into the shoulder press. Definitely stern, but we're back now with Yanya. She's managed to get the left foot up and steady onto the finish hold, and that will be a top for Yanya in two attempts. She's holding the hip as she walks off there. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd definitely be holding my hip. I've had to put my foot in those positions. <laughs> I think I'd need a pair of crutches to get off the mat. The body on the line there a little bit there. Yanya scrapes up the forearm, bit of a sore hip, tricky little position. Sometimes quite difficult to warm up for that thing in the isolation zones. Isolation zones tend to be quite sort of one-dimensional, two-dimensional. Yeah, just, like just, just really flat boards. Tend to be pulling as opposed to pushing and twisting, and the force that's going down the spine when you're pressing on these things and twisting on those feet, it's it's absolutely immense. And you can see Yanya holding a hip a little bit and then poking her back. It's yeah, it's definitely a hard manoeuvre to warm up for. Competition moves on straight away. Yannick Floyd brought out the little battery fan there. You'll see it in that shot. You'll see him when he walks out. He's just got a little yellow fan with him. Thought it was a shower head. <laughs> it didn't look like a shower head. <laughs> or a hairbrush. <laughs> it's not a hairbrush. Like, like doublers both, you never know. Boulder two then. With Jesse Piltz. The right of that fantastic banner that we'll, we'll see at the podium in front of. Jesse, the first on the wall, this little jump into the shoulders. Didn't seem to quite land that right hand. On the inside of those two squadra volumes, there's a left and a right on the right hand one, jumping into the shoulders off that left foot. Didn't quite seem to make contact with it. Here we go on men's number two as well. Jump into the toe hook to start. 
pretty impressive move out in the shoulders. Very similar style boulders for the men's and ladies. Jesse makes the jump into the shoulders there. This is where the toe hook is out on the right. Really tricky match now. Or is she just going to go again using the toe hook? That does look like a more sensible option because the match is just a one. Just a couple of fingers on there, really. Not really a matchable hole, just the shoulders going through so much there. Just about to see us in the commentary position there, enjoying the action. I'm trying to stretch my neck out, pushing a foot closer to the toe up, but it's not working. Back with Yannick. He's made it through this first move. That'll be the zone for him. Now it seems to be... Spectacular move now. That's one way to do it, jump over the top, and now one more big move to the top now. You can see, we've not even got the finishing hold in the screen yet. There we go, just seeing it now. Oh, what power. Power Great work spare. there. <laughs> yeah, really quick climber, really dynamic, great movement. Yannick Flowey showing a true class there. Youngest climber in this male final, 20 years old. Good showing. All eyes now on Jessica Piltz. She's, I think she's done amazingly in the last few years to really start performing at high end in the bouldering. She's generally known as a lead climber, but she really shows her strength on the boulders too. Interesting, that time she just tried to go straight into the right heel rather than toe into heel. That looks horrendous, that swinging on those double Gastons, really winging in the shoulders and the elbows. Certainly like that move, that jump into double shoulder press. Yeah, pretty Cla cool. Classic bit of movement. Not only does it require accuracy, but power off of that bad foothold on top of that dual texture volume. Some serious gunnage in the shoulders as well. Well, the last go for her. One minute left. Latched it this time. Trying to get the adjustment, get those crimps down, out into the toe hook again this time. That was the first method. It's almost a foot wrap there rather than a toe hook. Now she's got a pounce for that next hold. Oh, oh just so goes, close. goes all around it. Jesse will have another go here. Occasionally that move's called the elevator doors. That sort of double Gaston's, if you can imagine. In case of an emergency, elevator's stuck closed, you've got to give it the force it open with your hands. I'm trying to open the elevator doors here, Jesse Pills. Keenly onto the holds this time. Will she hit this toe up? Come on. Much faster now. Hits it with only five seconds remaining, though, so it's going to be close. Does bail out. That's put so much effort through that boulder getting to that. That awkward toe hook, heel hook method. Shake of the head, though, unfortunately, for Jesse walks away with no top. But she did get the zone on that last attempt. So that was a definite bonus. I like it. The zone was a definite bonus. Yeah. <laughs> Do you like that? I like that, yeah. A bit of good. old school, new school terminology mixed. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. It's so hard to stop using the word bonus. It's been around forever, and all of a sudden... Don't start with it now. We're trying, yeah, <laughs> don't, 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 just filtering that into our minds is going to cause us all sorts yeah, of trouble. Yeah, no, sorry. The Apologies. Apologies. Mia Krampel now. Let's see what she can do on women's number two. And Luke Posh, after doing so well, two attempts just for him on boulder number one. Yeah, we haven't seen the... Um, the move after the first move yet it's on the fun. men's boulder. We did miss that on the live feed a minute ago. Yeah, yeah, and Luca just a bit of a wasted attempt trying to establish into the starting position, realizes straight away that he can't span it with his arms, has to sort of do that almost flick and toe hook with the right foot into that far furthest right cone. Yeah, it's a really long way apart, those two two starting cones. We did try that when we went out and observed the boulders ourselves, and it's absolutely miles apart, so it does start with this toe, and then you have to reach the next green line there. Yeah, that is nice the start up. position. 
does work. There's a lower foothold there underneath the cone as well. I feel like he wants to bring the foot up, but Mia Krampel's absolutely in crush mode here. Using that toe hook. Interestingly, that ginormous circular section of wall is an infill volume. There's no texture on that. So you can see them skittering around with their left foot. Left foot smear on the wall is not really giving you much. Walking away, holding shoulders again. These days, Gaz, in these competitions, just the, the shoulders just seem to take an absolute hammering. Yeah, it's uh, super physical. Uh, all these big, wide moves, especially when the dynamic moves. This sort of move on the men's now, this jump into the shoulder press. Yeah, uses the left foot volume this time, still traveling a bit too fast. Yeah, we still yet to see the method that has already been used by Yannick on this boulder. Didn't quite get, catch that on the live feed. Just fumbles the elevator doors that time, Mia. Always hard when you're trying to catch these two holds and this just slightly beyond the periphery of vision. Yeah, you didn't. <laughs> Do you look at the left hand or the right hand? <laughs> Big rip off that left hand crimp. And Luca Post, just as he's releasing the toe, he's really firing across to the left. Here, yeah, Crample sticks the jump. Render's position. That right hand is actually slotted crimp as well. It wasn't hard enough to jump to a crimp already. Really nice use of the left toe hook as well to establish the right toe hook. Just wiggling that right toe to hit on the sweet spot. Looks like she's going to try and match the roots. I've put a blocker on there to try and avoid that. So she's a tenacity of mere crample. That's quite impressive. She's able to keep that left foot low also. It's flexibility really working in her favour oh, there. Oh, and there's the slip off that dual text volume. Not too sure that's the method that the root setters have set, but it seems to work for Mia. Mia Crampo definitely not 100% happy with her right shoulder there. Definitely working the shoulders quite a bit, this boulder. She keeps kind of coming off, holding it, stretching it, doing a few rotations and arm swings. The nature of the beast, this is the final. There's been a lot of boulders, a lot of hard boulders climbed already, so yeah, those shoulders are going to be tired. Smoothly through the jump. Jan Luca still not getting the measure of that second move on the men's boulder number two. Looks like she's going to work the cr crimp match again. This yeah. is better. Nicely done. Ten seconds now. Time shouldn't be too much of an issue. Yes, for Mia Crample, that was really well deserved. Big battle went in there. Really unhappy with her shoulder all the way through that, but kept it together. Like I said, this is the final. All or nothing. She's going to the Olympics, though, so you don't want an injury at this stage in the season, that's for sure. Yeah, this would be a bad time to pick up an injury. In, it's always a bad time to pick up an injury, obviously, but um, this year is a very, very big year for climbing, as we all know. And obviously very big for Mia, who is going to the Olympics in Tokyo. Next two climbers, Lucia Targas and Sergei Tepishko. Lucia was absolutely awesome on the first boulder. You know, relatively inexperienced in many ways, but didn't really show that on the first boulder at all. Let's see how Sergei Tepishko gets into this little jump move. Does opt to bring the left foot up. Smaller release for him, but it's, it's two shoulders for the men, two for the women. I think that hurt his skin, actually. I felt that, yeah. <laughs> that burns. That was really painful. But see, uh, just not quite finding the height at the moment into the two Gastons jumping up there. Here we go again. 
That was close. So they are, he's like saying, Mike, that right hand hold that she's jumping to is actually blocked. It's a little slot. It's really hard to hit. Second effort coming here. Looks like Sergei Spicer is going to go for the inverted knee bar. Looks like you're going to continue to go feet first here. That's nice, a really good method. You were saying earlier, Gaz, that could have been a potential method. Looked like a solid way to do it. Uh, just the big move now at the top, that big left hand wrap over this time. Oh, a little bit of a wheel spin there for Sergei. What methods are going to try this time? It looks like going to go try kind of more conventional mantle method. Solid in the triceps so far, pushing this one out. It's got to release one hand to grab the top hold. Nicely done with a bit of a left forearm. So good, Pishko does seem to go really well at this competition, made the podium last year. That's a good effort. And a couple of new methods there. Um, men's boulder number two. He's definitely putting in a very strong performance in this final already. Back with the only climber now out on the mats, Lucia. The young Slovenian. Great to see another new face in such a great international lineup as this. A bit hard to brush that right hand slot, I can imagine, with a massive, huge brush. Still struggling on the distance anyway. Just brush all around it and never actually get into the important bit. Yeah, at the moment it looks like she is going too fast. She's having to go fast to make the distance. Then a bit too fast and aggressive to catch the holds and hold the yeah, we saw. Uh, shoulder press. So with Jesse and Vermeer, they, they jumped quite powerfully into that position, but they tried to jump with bent arms. So they're landing it a little bit with a bent arm. That really helps to hold that sort of position. Any jump, really, you want to be landing bent arms rather than straight arms. And has have a bit of a bend in the left arm, especially that time for Litsia Sharkov. Now, can she have the body tension to swing that leg out? Looks like she's dragging that right hand crimp, front three fingers, little fingers dropped off. Battle mode commences here. Oh, do, you so don't hard to get hold of that toe hook. So doesn't want to drop out. Such an effort to get it in there in the first place. 20 seconds now. I think she is going to walk away from that one, and she does. Three climbers still to come on the second boulders then. From one Slovenian to a pair of Slovenians, Lučka Rakovic and Gregor Vazonic. Gregor first out on the mats. He goes all the way to the cone boulder. See what Gregor makes of this. Luchka first to pull on. You can see close in there that foothold on the volume. Doesn't look too great. There we go. Sort of a classic jumping position that. And that and that looked like she favoured that right hand into the slot a little bit and missed the left hand completely. Like, like we said before, it's very hard to see two things at once that are slightly outside your peripheral vision. Gregor that time, just sizing up the, the right toe release. Didn't bring his left foot up to that sort of flat volume underneath the starting cone. Luchka catches it this time, zings out of that right hand, but that burns again as well on her skin. Gregor this time brings the left foot up. Hopefully he'll be able to use that just to slow this move down a little bit. Bit of a hand swap, interesting. For what he's thinking here, got himself a bit stuck. Oops, <laughs> I think I'll get off. <laughs> Climbed himself into a bit of a hole there. And the judge is pointing out blood on the knee, I think that is. He'll probably just pack some chalk into there. Not allowed to bleed. What do you call it? Act actively bleeding on the, on the wall as such. The judges can't allow that. For obvious reasons. Um, something he might have to deal with. He'll just pull his shorts down over the kneecap for now, by the looks of it. Show it, yeah. 
Luchka sticks the jump again. This toe looks really hard to get out there. It's totally blind for a start. Hard to find it, find the distance. It's, it's a move to get into the starting position here in the men's second boulder. There's the big jump. Super fierce starting moves on balls two for the men and the women. There's the blood again. Just wiping it on his hands. So the judges will be keeping a close eye on Gregor's knee. Yeah, ultimately, if you're bleeding, it's usually at the fingertips, and the idea of not letting that happen is to stop at a slight disadvantage if you sort of effectively create moisture on the hold. Obviously, there's hygiene reasons there as well. Luchka back on, back into that familiar position, dangling off two very bad holds in shoulder presses. Oh, it's horrendous position. It's hard to watch this boulder, really. That was good this time with the feet, went into the first toe hook, matched it, and then into the further toe hook. Just wraps those into full crimps now that she's got a bit of weight on the, that lower left leg. Really trying to establish that right foot. Super powerful left shoulder move here. Got a working combination with the two feet. She's not completely happy with that toe hook. It's definitely not as good as as you want around the corner there. Hanging on to those crimps for quite a while now. That was a good little training session in the middle of the comp, wasn't it? Yeah, a little fingerboard session. Yeah. Good 20 seconds hanging on a really bad pair of crimps. Greco not being able to slow down this release at all at the moment. Full stretch with the right toe hook. The big release. He's walking away with 30 seconds left. He's not too impressed with that boulder at all. He's going to have to go back and get his game face back on for the third and fourth boulders. It was all smiles at the start of the competition, but it's certainly got real now. Slovenian pair struggling here. Butchka's walking away as well. The competitions have become wide open all of a sudden. Well, certainly a hard set of boulders. A couple of tops on that second boulder already, but then Gregor suddenly got a check with reality. He's unable to make that move. We shall see what the only Kruder makes of it. He's walking out with the knee pad. Yeah, I was just about to say, spotted the knee pad there. He's obviously got his eyes on something. A technique that he spotted. You could see the knee bar earlier from uh, Sergei Topishko. We've seen it used a few times in the past already as well. We've seen Adam Ondra touting the knee pad in a few events, boulder and lead. Yeah, currently no rules against that, currently. So yeah, it does the move to get into the start. Chloe does the jump. There's the big release. That is brutal, it's jumping into that shoulder. Super cool move. Earlier tops on this boulder looking more and more impressive from uh, Yannick Floey, the German, Sergei Topishko from Ukraine. Hopefully we can just switch to Chloe. Here we can, she has to start the first move. It's such a battle to get this toe settled on the right hand side, but seems pretty comfortable with that. Solid into the zone. This is a good effort from Chloe. Needs Maybe to work got to bring that the left foot. foot up. Yeah, work that foot out, get the shoulder press going, roll over. Really from what we saw here. before, this from should Chloe. in theory be in the bag. Come on, Chloe. Got a big fight on her hands all of a sudden here. Looks a little bit short on that last move. Full stretch, eyes closed. Gurn for the final hold. Superb, Chloe Curley, what a performance. That was amazing climbing. Just holds her arm a little bit there. That will have taken, taken its toll, I'm sure. Yeah, big wince, pain on her face as she comes down holding her arm. One focus now, Yoni Kruder. Super close to holding that press then. Jump into the double shoulders. The ladies go straight up into the two shoulder presses. 
the men go sideways. Good close up there, the hold. Yeah, can you see what they're jumping, jumping to? It's, it's almost in cut, but you're flying at full pace towards it. <laughs> From a position where your foot was 10 feet away in the opposite direction. What's that in meters? Come on, we're in Europe. Brexit. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Some distance. 16. <laughs> Is that right? Sure, yeah. No. <laughs> Oh, nice. oh, that was better from Yone. He managed to maintain contact with that left foot. Straight onto the toe up, and he's located the zone. This is where his knee pad would have come in useful, but he's left it on the mat. Looks like he doesn't drop into a full knee bar. Super 3D, bit of climbing here from Yone. Big wrist wrap on the right hand, easily across in the end. Seen both guys who got to this position find the top. Can Yone Crude follow? Going to go for the dynamic pounce to the top, gets it down. First time he sticks to the second move, does the boulder. Crazy Cruder puts on a show as always. Had uh, to this fight is, for it though. This is really exciting from the performance that Yone's putting in. He's obviously come back with a vengeance. He is cooking on gas. Final pair waiting in the wings there. The edge of the curtain, final pair. It's going to be another Vadim Simonov and Yanya. Both top first boulders. Five attempts it was in the end for Vadim. Second attempt for Yanya. No doubt she'll be devastated she fell off on the first boulder. Yeah, she'll have had a quick fingerboard session in the back room. <laughs> See what she makes of this. Timonov sort of goes for the full chop into the starting right toe hook. Yanya sticks the move first time, really reels in those crimps, just adjusting the right hand a little bit. So she's much higher than some of the other female athletes in that position straight away, really pulling up into it. Not an easy move though. And it falls off again. It's really great to see her properly tested here. That left foot position does seem to be quite crucial. It was quite impressive how when you only did the move, he managed to maintain contact on that left foot. Yeah, I do wonder if he was sort of jamming his toe in the other side between his yeah. two volumes a little bit. Might have just give him just enough to keep full contact with the left foot. A little twist on the foot. Okay, a bit of a, a finger lock style. Yeah, so between that left hand that he's got and that volume, just twisting the toe right to the back of the volume and trying to get a bit, little bit of a lock. Vadim Timonov's just trying to search for something else, as we saw with Gregor Vazonic. Whoa, the dynamic chop with the left foot. That was pretty impressive. It would be impressive if you can get out of here. Goes for the cross. This guy's got crimp power. Whoa, for this days. is brutal. Amazing performance here from Vadim doing that cross through there. Onto the zone. Yang is back to action. Left and right here at the moment. Everyone being treated with two incredible boulders here at the Studio Block Masters final. This time, can Yanya hit the shoulder? She does as Vadim Timonov is trying to push it out for the finish. Looks like Yanya's figured out what she needs to do with the left foot as well. Both climbers really high up on the wall. Just the last moves left to do for both of them. All climbers who got to this position top the boulders. Let's see if these guys can follow. Looks like Yanya's got it in the bag. Nice little top for her. Second go again. Two tops and four attempts for her. And Vadim Timonov does get it sorted with a completely new method. That was awesome. Bit of climbing and a, and a real, really good show there on the second boulders. Thoroughly Took enjoyable. Took a while there, boulders. Vadim, to work his, own, work his own personal method. But uh, yeah, the high wrap on that volume and kick the foot out into the opposite volume did work a treat. Not too sure if the root set is imagined that way. Yeah, it worked though. Yep, it's a good solution. Good to see the results. There we go. Sergei Topishko's at the top at the moment. It comes down to attempts, two tops and two zones. Three attempts for those tops. And Yerne just behind with five attempts. Vadim Timonov. Eight attempts, and it's Yannick, Floey, Jan Luka Posh, and Gregor Vazonic down at the bottom at the moment. Yanya, two tops in four attempts. Chloe Collier, two tops in six. She's still really in this one. And then the next four, all with one top. Yeah, strong showing by Chloe, obviously. Doing it very well. Let's hope she can maintain the pace. Give Yanya a little run for her money. A little pause as we're getting ready 
to bring out the competitors. For this third boulder, we are halfway through this Studio Block Masters 2020 here in Germany. Myself, Gaz Parry, and Mike Langley on the microphones. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves at home watching this. Absolutely spectacularly well organized event here again at the Studio Block Masters. Jessie coming out, you see, we're just holding. Oh no, she's just holding a chalk bag. So no, she was coming out like she was walking out with an injury. It was a bit of a surprise. Just holding the chalk bag closed as she trotted across the mat. Let's see if this start position works then on women's number three. We are onto the far right hand side here. So it's a pair of slabs next. Yannick failed to pull on on the first go there. It just shows how hard and simple this right hand boulder is. There's not many holds on it, but that is one pretty bad sloper to jump into. All sorts of little jibs and screw-ons here in the women's competition. A whole selection of different things that you could, could use. And that looks like the palm down, a ret roll over there in the men's competition. Right hand down, left hand rolling over to the ret. Let's see if that is the method that seems to be established. There's a big pile of chalk on that far right hand volume. We talked about that in the boulder observation. Hard one to read, even though it's so simple here on men's number three. The women's is massively complicated and equally difficult to read. This is a good shot for this men's boulder number three. Yannick going a little bit slower this time. Oh, where's the big palm down rotator? Yeah, that, that black sloper that you're palming down on is quite a long way in off the arret. So there is going to be a big rotation there. Jessica back on her boulder number three, though. She's got to this point already. Been through this move and got to the white volume above her head. Left foot needs to go out. Another small jib coming up. Looking at it there, but goes into the palm. Just a tiny little foot slip down the volume there for Jesse Peel's lost contact. Yannick back on again. Push too hard that around that wreck, you end up out of the fire exit just behind him. <laughs> yeah, at least the door's open. <laughs> Won't clatter into the door, that's for sure. We just <laughs> end up in the plants, plant pots out. There. It's a really nice little sitting spot out there, a little patio and some deck chairs. So, you know, maybe that's where he's heading, who knows? Certainly might ruin your day if you come flying off around that wreck, to say the least. Big slip from Jesse Peels, a bit of a painful slide down the wall there. See a big stripe of rubber on that volume that she's just brushing off now. Yannick again. Oh, this time nails it. That's better, he managed to maintain contact with the volume and the foot. Classic basic arret climbing at this point. But then another terrible looking black volume with the zone on to head back to the top. How bad that sloper is. There's not a right lot there, is there? Not a right lot where his feet were either. Jesse Peel's really pushing on the underside of this volume now. Putting in a great battle here, Jesse. Gets stood up. It's a pretty bad left foot. It's a quite a big square screw on, but it's just got a small rib on it. That little edge, pinchy crimpy rib from Blue Pill, isn't it? Full, full span between the right hand white volume and this. Big triangle here for Jesse. Going to find the foot position that's going to work into another pressed undercuts finish. Pr pretty much all weight on the left foot. Big heartbreaker down the volume there. Conditions on the bottom of the shoe seem to be vital on this bowl. There's so much chalk on the mats. Yannick's on for probably his last go. Too quick then. Into the arete. Yeah, he picks up his stuff and he exits the building. Jessica, meanwhile, back on. She has the last go, 10 seconds on the clock. She progresses, nope. That's her attempt on boulder number three, over. Frustrating for Jesse Pills there. Got really high on the boulder, was, had the final hold in her crosshairs and just a big foot slip down the volume. Certainly two hard boulders there by the looks of it, Mike. Jesse Pills struggling. Um, in numerous places on that boulder. It looks like he can fall off at any point on that boulder for the ladies. And Yannick finally getting out into the arete and main, 
locating the zone, but unable to make any progress after that to the top. Those volumes do look bad on that men's boulder. Again, Luke Posh just sprinting onto the mats at the end. Ultimately, has to wait. You can see the four minute clock that the timers that the climbers have got to climb each of these boulders just off to the side there. The crowd can see that as well. So, we've had some pretty tense moments right up to the buzzer so far. Yeah, I mean, the interesting thing for me again is yet, yeah, yet again, the climbers are coming out and trying to climb on these volumes with essentially dirty shoes. It's don't quite get it. It's <laughs> <laughs> a polite way of putting it. <laughs> saw Jesse's feet slip a number of times. That's nicely done for Mia Kamp. Trying to use the top of that volume with a right hand. I saw Jesse just using the underside. Jan Luca looking a bit too fast on that first movement. We've seen it done in the end. Quite a few goes, but it was quite a slow movement in the end. But Mia making very fast progress now on this, actually. She's done well to get to this zone quite quickly. See Jan Luke Posh just crimping the underside of that, or well, the top side of that volume, I should say, around the back of the volume. Crimping the uh, outer edge rather than the feature itself. That's a bad edge on that volume as well. It's not. It's, it's fingernails. It's chamfered down the back. as well. <laughs> dig the nails down the back of it and hope they don't rip off. It's one way to make your nails go short, isn't it? Well, Mia made very good progress on that attempt, but then seemed to rush it at the last moment. Here we go again. Mia is back on the boulder. Oof, another zing by the foot there. Just trying to load that really bad left foot. Get out of the brush. Gives them a quick clean. It's a bit of an old, old school slab in many ways, this women's one, with lots of little jibs and footholds. Classic bit of bad, bad feet. I like the variation on it, the, the pulling on the small crimps to start and smearing up the volumes, then suddenly going into this press, suddenly going really powerful, and then back into the smear again as well. The transition between the two styles is really cool. That's a hard to stand on foot old position, that. You can see the press on the underside of that volume. Looks quite nice using that volume with your right hand on top. Just helps you establish a bit of height, pushing through the legs. And Luca Posh not finding anything at the moment with one minute left. Foot swap again, looks like she's suffering with skin. Mia yeah, doesn't seem to be quite able to get back to her high point again. Yeah, 50 seconds, under 50 seconds left now. Going in for a retape, it's going to be a bit of a desperate last attempt here. She's got about 10 seconds, you would have thought, to get that tape on and get re-chalked up. Really short on time now. Is it going to be enough? She look, takes a quick look at the clock. And Luca Posh getting closer and closer to sticking it. 30 seconds left now. She's going to have to climb fast through this boulder. It's so frustrating for the climbers to be bleeding every time they come out. Another zing there, and that's her attempt over. Again, Luca Posh is still on board. Almost onto the erect. Then that was the slowest he went on that move. That time it got super close. That's it, the buzzer. Uh, round is over. Be good to see the full tower of results. So we can see exactly where the competition sits at the moment as we get to halfway through on this second boulder. Hopefully we can bring that for you guys. Looks like this competition is going to go down to the final boulder. The extremely tall and extremely strong Sergei Topishko is out on the mat. And joined by Lucia 
Tarkush, the young and up and coming Slovenian lady. Judge not happy with Sergei Tepichko's starting position there. Let's see how Lucia gets on with this slabby number. Oh, we don't know too much about her, so we don't know her ins and outs of her toolbox, what she can do on different styles. We've seen it this way with the right hand on the top, the left hand now turning underneath into an undercut. That was interesting on the men's side there. Sergej Pishko almost using his full wingspan to go between the volume and the erect and just waving at that next volume higher up as well. This is looking good. Just can get this foot on. Get so some real weight through it now. Looks like she's going to go quickly to the finish hold rather than shuffling up the left hand. Quite hard to decide what to do because it looks like you could probably push down on the white volume as well. Maybe to one put one into an undercut and pull on the left hand or press down on that right hand. It's really hard to tell with those holds. Yeah, you could see on that final big triangle up and left. There's a lot of chalk going all the way up that volume. Potentially it could be better to shuffle the left hand. Easier said than done, certainly from our position, sipping coffee here in a warm studio. Out there, 16-year-old on the mats, all on her own. Certainly can't discuss it with anybody anymore. <laughs> so there goes Pishko, oh, <laughs> pedaling up the arret. <laughs> fell up that. That was good. One, two, three, up a layback. Never seen that before. Oh. He's just fallen off, but he's still on. He's fallen off for a second time. And, and he's managed still to going. clap hands, I think, at that point. <laughs> wow. That was something ridiculous. He fell off it three times, pretty much, and he still managed to find a top. He turned in the top move into a coordination move off the arete. God, I think a bit of wingspan helped him there, but take nothing away from him that was a really impressive ascent he basically just fell up that last move oh this is nice as well from let's see uh, oh no exactly where jesse bill slipped as well see Taka just slipped on that top move i would love to see a replay of sergey's <laughs> attempt on that <laughs> That was amazing. Oh, yeah. How many times did you slip and still stay on? I think that one will be going around the internet a few times. Well, 52 seconds on the clock. There's definitely long enough for this young lady to climb this boulder. She's back on board. Close to a slightly dubious start there, but the judges aren't running on, so they're actually happy with it. This move alone, this standing up into this shoulder press undercut, looks absolutely brutal. Slight slip back, but she manages to maintain contact. Such a slow boulder as well now with 25 seconds left. The fishing oh. rod action there as well coming into the shot. Yeah, she looked a little bit tired on that go and we can understand why. That previous effort was really, really good and very close to the top. Yeah, but we can see the full results. Sergei Tepishko now three tops in seven attempts. Yeah, and you're still at the top at the moment. Chloe and uh, Yanya still to go, Luchka still to go as well. It's going to be a tight one, this one. Hopefully it will be very exciting right towards the finish. We still have a long way to go. Great set of boulders up to now. People are climbing them. Getting very close on the ladies. A couple of ascents on the men's now. One ascent on the men's. And some very close shaves. Gregor Vazonic now for the men and Luchka Rakovic for the ladies.
Gregor just eyeing this move out onto the Arat. Looks like he thinks he might be able to do it in control, but trying to go as slow as possible onto that Arat and palm down and then maintain contact with the wall and not go out the back door. Luchka back on again. This move looks quite tasty, standing down on this bad foothold, slightly wrong angle. Struggling to get up into that volume though, Luchka. Yeah, if this boulder ends up being a really big, important moment here in the women's competition, it's going to be quite interesting because Lucia and Jesse both had the finish hold right in their sights up there. I think there could be some big moments there. If Chloe Collier doesn't do this boulder quickly, but Yanya does, she could win this competition on this boulder. Great shot there from the sky cam. Or the fishing rod. <laughs> the more technical term. <laughs> drone, I think, is the real term. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. It's definitely not a drone. <laughs> Ro rod cam. The producer shouts, shouts at us. Yeah, rod cam. Rod We've cam. just had our, <laughs> our wrists slapped for calling it a fishing rod. <laughs> it's an expensive fishing rod, I reckon. Yeah. Stick. Stick. <laughs> Camera on a stick. I'm sure if uh, Jan Genou, our French friend from the United Kingdom, is listening to us now, he will be very excited. There's a fishing rod involved in this competition. Yeah, Jan Genou, IFSC route setter, big time fisherman. Luchka now looking really solid on this stand up move. It's a really tenuous foot spot there. She does well. It's where we saw. Let's see her and Jesse looking really solid on this section. Can we find a top here? Look at that span across between the volume and the big white fiberglass hold on the right. Oh, this is superb here from Luchka Rakovic. Can we find the first top? And she does. Back in the game, Luchka Rakovic. That's so solid on the feet up there. Didn't see that foot slip that we saw from. Jesse and Lucia on the last move. Looks absolutely perfect all the way through that boulder. And Gregor, again, is walking away. Well, for a moment on that last move, she did put both feet on that volume and managed to stay in contact. Um, but that could be a big game changer, a top on that for Luchka. Puts her on to two tops. So next out is Chloe Collier from Belgium. If she does this, that will put her and keep her in contention with Janja. Put the pressure on, keep the pressure down, but Luchka has just done that as well. She's put some more pressure on these two. Top of the leaderboard, maintaining her third position at the moment. Great switch up of style of boulders, this from power to precision. Interesting high left foot position there from Chloe straight away. Looking bunched on that volume. Move dynamically into the undercut. Let's see how Yerne gets on with this arette. Just trying to go fingernails down the back of the right hand. Has to move fast in the hands. Try to go for a little foot tap. That could work. So we go to Pishko, the only guy to top. It's boulder number three. I think he was quite lucky on that top. He just sort of fell in the right direction. <laughs> he he swam. fell in a lot. Of, he was <laughs> swimming up there, wasn't he? <laughs> it's just... If you start falling, just keep the body parts moving and you never know what they're going to catch. And it worked for him. He found himself at the top of boulder number two and the top of the leaderboard. Yone back on. Yone and Chloe both know that this is going to go down to the wire, this competition. I 
think the Russians are going to be a little bit surprised here. See, women's boulder's now been topped, but for the men's boulder, big struggle over here on this Aret. So it goes in for the, you know, just down there and right, goes in for the liquid chalk. Takes opportunity to rest while it dries out. Again, Chloe going for that really high left foot. Just to make quite a powerful stab into this underside of the volume. Oh, superb, look at that, heels down, putting as much force through the shoe as possible. Uh, she switched to the standard method that we've been seeing already in this competition. That's the left toe high on that little edge. Left hand, she'll probably turn them now to an undercut. This is really nice from Chloe at the minute. We've seen a few people in this position, but only one top from this height. Chloe will need to step up onto that volume with the left foot. Hard foot swap here. Gets the foot swap, done nicely. She was really delaying getting that in and actually completely committed to it in the end. You can see her wincing a little bit through being spanned and the pain through the left arm. Absolute warrior mode here for Chloe Collier. Two hands on the big volume now, shuffling up this arete. This is an awesome effort here from Chloe Collier, keeping herself right in this one. Off the top floor. Looks That's at her skin, I think she was completely out of chalk by that point. That she have such a shame after such a good fight there. There's only 40 seconds left on the clock, so I think they're going to really struggle to get another good attempt. Chloe, the best she can do is walk away with the zone that she's already got. So I think there's enough time to the top. Yerne doesn't have the zone yet, so... Well, Chloe must believe that she's got time for another go, because she's back on. 20 seconds now. You have to go really quickly through this boulder. Technically, it could be possible. Yeah, he's got to find something special here because not much happening for him. And it does all of a sudden find something special, but then falls off the red. And Chloe, has she timed this one right? Three seconds, he is timed out. It's a great effort from Chloe. Yeah, that was very close from Chloe, but she didn't make the top there, so stays with her score. Moves ahead of Janja Gambrat at the moment with two tops. And at three zones, Janja Gambrat on two tops and two zones. Janja still to climb on the boulder that we've just seen Chloe on. Here comes Janja Gambrat and Vadim Timonov, the final climbers on boulder number three. Such a close one, even in the men's competition. It's going to be going down to the final boulder. Number of zones being crucial. There's quite a lot of climbers there in the men's on two boulders. It's pretty tight at the top. So there goes Pishka currently in a really great position. Chloe yeah. Colley looking to everything she can to cling on to that first position. Andy Garnbrook can also take it away from her here. Little slip with the right hand, just popped off that start hold. Look pretty steady on the first part of the boulder. Vadim had his first go, he's just putting back in, brushing the holds. Quick wipe of his boots with so, some chalky hands. Just looking at the scores <laughs> here, guys. Chloe Collier, far as I'm aware, on the quick graphic we saw there, two tops, three zones in five attempts to the top, eight attempts to the zones. You can see on the scores there, Jan has currently got two tops, two zones and four and three. If you can find quick tops here, could be over, but it's going to come down to attempts. Let's focus on the action for now, not bother with the maths. That's nice from Yanya. Quickly through that section, bit of volume wrestling, great angle up high on the wall there. Super confident on that foot swap. Wow. It's the one we've seen a few people slip off this left volume now with the left foot. Oh, dynamically into the top. I was thinking silently to myself, she's not going to try and do this top move dynamic, is she? And she did. And, um, yeah, it doesn't look like the best of choices. We've seen it done, but not like that. Seen it done a lot slower than that attempt. It does push this boulder into the final 
round, which is great. Superb seeing Anya tested like this. She hasn't lost a boulder competition for a very, very long time. Adam Timonov not enjoying the men's number three, also really little action on that arete. Only Sergei Dupishko finding something. Yanya absolutely cruising through this lower section, so confident in the feet, just skipping around on the bad footholds. Let's see what she can do this time. So spanned on that lower section, she can't get her left hand up. We thought that was going to be an option, but it looks like she's just going to confidently pounce into it again. Now she's looking around for different options. So Chloe walking up this arete now, that's it, bringing the right foot in. Yanya's going to lose the right hand very shortly, though, because she gets too spanned. Again, pushes into it quickly. Oh, and holds it somehow. Superb from Yanya Garmrit. Yeah, amazing performance again there from Yanya. Not really understanding how to do that move. And as the time counted down, just went with total commitment. Managed to hold the finish with the right hand and get the match. So in the next round, Chloe would have to boss the boulder and Yanya would have to not do it for this to be a bit of an upset as Vadim Timonov looks for something a bit different. Not, it has effectively worked, this boulder for the root setters, but it's... Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what he was doing. That was like he was going <laughs> to smash the TV or, or he was celebrating. I don't quite know. We are moving on though to the fourth and final boulder. We're going down to the centre of the wall now. Yeah, that was definitely a very interesting boulder for the men over on the right-hand side. Not many holds, not many tops, but it got climbed, so it was very possible. Great to see there. We've got the scores. Current scores on the screen. Sergi, three tops. Yannick in second place with two. Vadim. Split on attempts, again in two, and Yerni Kruder currently sitting in fourth place, also with two tops. Yeah, that could all easily switch around, though. Yeah, it could definitely switch around quite quickly with a lot of attempts on tops and a lot of attempts on zones. It could be quite easily changed with a swift flash or two. Yeah, Sergei Tepishko in the men's competition is the one to beat at the moment. Three tops, three zones, both in seven attempts. Yannick Flo is in second place, so he'll be putting the heat on straight away here if he can get a quick top. Yeah, this for the men it looks like a super cool and funky boulder through these um, interesting beta volume wings. As for a sequence, don't ask us. And uh, probably don't ask the climbers either. I don't think they've got too much of a sequence yet. Let's see what Jesse's got left in the tank on this uh, fourth and final boulder. Big fight required, really. It's just an absolute journey on these big slopey volumes. Axis holds. Nice there, good flexibility for the right heel for Jesse Pills. What such an incredible athlete. Huge Austrian and Slovenian contingent here this weekend. Yannick Floe putting the piling on the pressure on the other guys if you can find a top here. Least needs a zone. up the leaderboard, it's basically a top or nothing here for Yannick Flowey. There's so many attempts to get his earlier zones. This is a really tough boulder. Not only it's physically a hard boulder, it actually takes quite a long time to climb it. It's going to sap a lot of power, a lot of strength. On him right behind him, miles behind him. He's almost on that boulder for a minute and a half then. Took a lot of effort. 
Jessie also made quite good progress on her fourth and final boulder. Yeah, it's, if he wants to win this competition, he's got to top this boulder. So give him three tops and four zones. I think it's going to run the clock down a little bit here. Needs to recover. He was on that boulder for a long time now. It's quite a hard thing to actually stand on the mat and read. It's more one of those boulders where you just, you've just got to sort of get on it and see what happens. All that effort, and he didn't even get to the zone. Jesse Piltz, the first to pull back on. Jesse's already made made it to the zone on this fourth and final boulder for her. Yeah, she'll be looking for a top to get herself a podium position. She's currently down in fourth. Good technique through this first initial section with that high toe, heel hook, toe hook there. It's a real slow and steady journey here in the women's competition. Oh, a big dry fire off there for Jesse Pills. Still searching around for the methods here. Just to try and get all the way out to that big fin out on the right, the sail volume. It looks like he's running out of gas really quickly here. 36 seconds left, Jesse back on first, Yannick on that also. It's probably going to be the last attempt for both athletes here. Yannick moving quickly now through this lower sideways section of climbing. Ramped up the pace all of a sudden here, Yannick flowing. Looks like Jesse's powered out and they're both tapping out at that point. That was Yannick's best attempt though there. He did make it to the final sail volume. Finn, whatever you want to call it. Made it with his right hand. But that'll be the final scores for Jesse Piltz. And Yannick. Yannick Flurry going out in second place at the moment. It can be potentially taken away from him. Just a number of attempts. It's actually, from our position, it's a little bit tricky to read the number of attempts on to zones from our position. This is the size of the screen we've got. And my eyesight. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have gone to spec savers. actually. It might be nothing to do with the screen. To get a bonus for that name drop. <laughs> yeah, of course. Did you not read that in the contract? No, no, I missed that one. I'm just trying to drop the name Ferrari in there at some point as well. But <laughs> <laughs> No, not very good in the UK with all the holes in the roads. Right. Who's going to pull on first? Jan Luca tries to work out some sort of sequence through this cluster of volumes and fins that is the men's boulder. Mia looks like she's getting ready. First one to pull on. We're really firing off these volumes at the moment. See there, there's a big tick mark. There's a small triangle just on the back side of that sail that the guys can have a bit of a leg wrap on. Almost searching for a hand jam there. I don't think that was the intended method by the root setters. A little slot volume for the left hand. That was nice. They're really shaking at the moment here, Jan Luca Posh. So much power going through the fingers. This is looking good though. How far behind it is. Oh, unlucky there, really. It was going really well. It's all eyes on Mia Crample, though. She's high up now, established through the zone. Really full stretching the legs with that right toe hook. We've already seen Jessica into this position. Now, this next move does look hard on this boulder. Two more holds to the top. This move looks tough, and the left heel just blows there. Black back on the mat. Yeah, really struggling with uh, with only one top and three zones at the moment. A little bit off the pace in this final. Young Jan Luca Posh, regardless, I think, of the outcome of this actual final, he'll be pretty happy. 
to be picking up the pace with some of the big guns of the bouldering world. Yeah, just really running down the clock. Such a long, powerful boulder. A little bit more control this time. He's got a bit of a sequence by the looks of it. Now he goes for a hand jam, I think, in the back there. Looks like for a bit of a thumb lock. Just loses it. Looks so far behind you, that move. It's hard to keep contact on the left hand. Mia Krampel in for the big fight. That's up at this final boulder. Not long left on the clock for these two. Almost down to one minute. I think we'll see another attempt from both climbers. Mia can actually improve her position here if she can find a top, obviously, and a zone. The zone will be given to her automatically if she does find the top. It's worth fighting for out there. That's the buzzer gone. This will be I think, the last attempt. Both boulders climb quite long. A lot of moves to get to where the climbers are falling off. And Luca first, first to set off. Mia back on now on the left-hand side of the screen. wonder if this move is actually a move out on the hand jam. Stop that rotation. Oh, he came super close to holding it then. Possibly the final burn here for Mia. Nice little one-two. And again, everything you've got now, not going to be enough. Shake the head. Mia Cramples out. She won't be improving her position, unfortunately, from fifth. It's a big fight here, but a good, good start to the season for Mia Campbell to make the final, nonetheless. It's all out of time for Jan Luka Posh. He's going back in for it anyway. Never really controlled the zone. He taps out as well in fifth position. Now it starts to get really exciting. I've just noticed on that final fin, there is another volume underneath it that pokes out on the right-hand side. I wonder if you take the undercut, which is what Jan Luka did in control, and before going for the fin, you spin and put the right heel on. And that'll give you the, um, the heel to pull you round and out onto the edge of that last fin. And then from what the root setters were saying, it's get on board the fin and start lay back in. <laughs> now then, Sergei Tepishko tops this, he wins the competition. Nobody would be able to catch him at that point because he's the only climber to top boulder number three. Wonder how he will deal with the nerves here. Let's see Atakush. Currently sitting down in sixth position. 16 years old, trots onto the mat now. Again, a zone hold would be nice. Can definitely elevate her position out of sixth. So go to Pishka then. The top here wins the competition. All the way out to that far crack with his right hand. So he skipped a little slot. Now he goes back to it. Such a confuser, this boulder. Really got to figure it out on the fly. Fully mounted on this middle sail. Dropping on the same move as Jan Luca there, that big reach out. A long distance behind you. You can see in that shot we've got now how far out it is to that final fin. Brushes on the job with that boulder. Meanwhile, over on the left, the young Slovenian girl is back on and off. Bodies must be super tired by now. Two minutes 20 on the clock. Sergei, the first to pull on again. Different technique through this initial section than we've seen in the previous. Climber. 
looks really casual, really, through that lower section. So there goes Pishko, but we haven't seen anybody find a nice method on this next bit. No, it was so steep, it's hard to tell what he's doing with his feet there. You just, if you go with the right hand for that lip, you just can't hold that left. It just doesn't, doesn't stay in that pinch that he's got with the left hand. Such a battle on this women's bowler. You go all the way out of the starting position, back round, and then eventually end up back with your right hand in the starting hold. So many moves. You know, really physical start, and then suddenly quite sloper exit from the steep section. Good flexibility to get that high foot onto the zone there, left foot. Now this is where the meat really starts with this boulder. It's where the holds get very bad and she's off, left foot. Losing the left foot first. Couldn't quite hold the rotation. Interesting that Sergei Tepishko has been given the zone on this boulder. That's the third, the final big fin. Unless I miss something, I wonder if that will be appealed. I may have missed it. Well, I think it's because he's going into it underneath it. With the right hand. Very surprised if this judging team got anything wrong, so it's probably my mistake. He's tapping on the underside of it to guarantee himself the zone. Does that constitute as control? The rule books are out. That's probably the holding of the zone there. You're right there, Gaz. It does award him the zone. I think that's it for both climbers. Good effort there. We have to wait now and see what is the possibility of Sergei Topisko being overtaken. Mike's currently Scurrying away out of the bit of paper. Yeah, to be honest, I think trying to work out some numbers. I think because he's got the zone there, because of the attempts of Vadim Timonov to get tops, even if Vadim topped it, the, the attempts are against him, unfortunately. Vadim Timonov will be the final climber out, but he's got two tops in and three zones in eight and 15 attempts, respectfully. Yeah, that's it. Sergi on four zones there. Yeah, even if it was Vadim to top it, it'd be three tops, four zones. He's already taken more attempts to his, that would be to his top. Sergei Tobitko's three tops in seven attempts has probably done it for him. So Luchka Rakovic, the first person to pull back on, followed by Gregor Vazonic. Teammates. As we were learning from Erska earlier on, very good friends as well, not only teammates and uh, competitors together. Travel and climb and train together all the time. It's good to hear. Gregor making good progress through these really complex fins. Nice from Greg Ovazanic, first climber really to stick the main element of that hold, shuffles up to it. This is looking really good, really pulling a bit of a rabbit out of the hat here for Greg Ovazanic. He's had a bit of a nightmare on the last couple of boulders, so to finish off with a top here would be spectacular. Great for the show as well. He's got to walk up this volume and pounce for that big ledge at the top of the wall. Greg Ovazanic is just chilling now to finish the competition. Lutzka's putting in a big fight here as well. Gregor just hanging out on the ledge. I think Gregor thinks he's on a sport route. Some 3D monster in Kalimnos. I sign up that last that hole. Doesn't want to go for it at the moment. He's got a release out of the roof. Oh, and Lutzka just slips off the penultimate hold. Big smile on her face. Oh, it's a superb sort of pre-season battles going down here. Gregor then lines it up this time. Still not happy to commit to it. Really interesting top move. Lucky this is not four plus minutes format these days, isn't it? Who could be up there all day? 
Big tense moment is building here for Greg Orvazon. He's got to commit to it at some point. Got loads of time. Has he got energy to hang on there forever? Doesn't look too much of a strenuous position. Now he looks like he's going to go for it and does and gets it done. In the end, it wasn't too much of a problem, but it was a real heart in the mouth moment there. Greg Ovazonic finishing his big pre season event with a nice little top to finish the round. He has been smiles and laughs all around this weekend. He's a top, top guy and a great athlete. Superb show from Gregor. He can have a lie down on his pillow now, can't he? Yeah, yeah, he can. He's brought it with him. Yeah. Have a little rest now. That was a really good effort, but all eyes now are on Luchka Rekovec. The clock is counting down one minute. We've seen her very high on this boulder already. Two tops and three zones are in the bank. Let's see if she can make it three tops. Definitely a hard block to finish on this, relying heavily on skin. Losing the foot there, and just back on the mat. Looks like she will try again. One last burn. Oh, you can see how hard that first move is, that drop into double undercuts. That's it, she calls it a day, checks the skin. Yeah, time to have a couple of days off, grow, grow some skin back. She's still got some, I think. Brutal weekend here at the Studio Block Masters, but fantastic pre-season preparation. Not only is it good preparation for training, general strength, working on the boulders, but also just to see where everybody is in the season. In many ways, the actual result, who wins this one, who takes away the podiums, isn't really that important in these athletes' eyes. I don't think it's about the training element of this and pre-season workout. Back into comp mode. Chloe Collier and Yone Crude are out next then. I think if there's anyone I'd have some money on for really climbing this boulder then. Yone is the man who does like this sort of real physical crushing style of boulder. But we shall see. Only one top up to now. No tops on the female boulder to the left. But Chloe Collier, I'm Podium. sure, is determined. Yeah, podium still available here Change for Yoni. Chloe, if she wants to pile on the pressure here, has to do this one very quickly and hope that Yanya doesn't do it. It's always a big ask, that first to top. Well, it looks like one of the harder boulders of this ladies' tour. And two. I think that Yanya might not be able to do it, but stranger things have happened. Chloe's just been an absolutely outstanding athlete this weekend. Interviews with her earlier, if you caught the pre-show. Battling through injury in the semi-finals, still pushing on to this round, and just been looking in great pre-season form. Superb from Chloe. yearney has got the big battle face on underneath the roof. Oh, nearly saved there. A little toe hook underneath the middle sail volume there. Yeah, that was the method that Gregor actually used, was that toe hook. I didn't really quite see when he put the toe hook in, whether it was before the move or he just did catch it as he did the move. Um, there, is this, there is a tick mark there pointing down to where that toe hook is going, whether there's a hold there or not. We didn't actually check underneath. Yeah, there's a, just a small triangular volume. It's very similar to the starting two volumes. It's right, one of those okay. tucked under there. So, yeah, that's, that seems to be the method to go out to the, the final wing. You need to have that toe hook in place to hold you on. So we have seen a top. Previous climber, Gregor Vazonic. Sent it with style. The only question left is, will we see another? Chloe's surely going to run the clock down here. She just needs to top this boulder. To put everything on the final climber, Yanya. Yanya with that three zones has pushed himself up into third. the off-season he's had breaking bones all over the place. There's a hill and then a crushed hill and then an elbow. So pieces this winter to come back and be fighting just shows what an awesome athlete he is. 
Well, that's it. He's managed to come out of that into the season and looking reasonably strong. Um, you know, season's long for him. He's got a lot of competitions to do, so um, he's only going to get fitter and stronger again. It's good to see. Always a fighter. Chloe back on also. This is probably it. She gets high. She needs to top this boulder, as we've said, to stand a chance to take the win here. She's looking good, though. Yeah, and it burns out on the underside of that volume. It's got to be the, one of Chloe's goes of her life here. Looking good at the moment. Got to release that toe, catching a big spin off. 38 seconds, is it going to be enough? Such a good attempt from Chloe there. She looked pretty solid on that. Yone's back on. He's only got 30 seconds on the clock. He's going to have to motor through this sequence. He's going for it. That's the heel, gets that leg wrap. But it's such a complicated boulder. There's a lot of movements to even get to the move that he's starting to fall off. Chloe's throwing in the towel as well. Hands the win to Yanya before she's even climbed on the last boulder. Oh, Yerni, it going. looks like he has found an easier method there. He found a way, if he only he could have kept going. Great show from Yerni Kruder. I think he's going to be spectacularly happy with his performance here at the Studio Block Masters once again. I think it's five years in a row that he's made the finals at Studio Block. Well, certainly he's going to be very happy that he is back on the international circuit and back with a vengeance. Sitting currently in third place, Yerni Kruder. Sergei Topishko at the top is unable to be beaten now. Yannick Floey, two tops and four zones. We have one more climber in the men's final and the women's final. Yeah, I hope this show does go spectacularly as we hope on the final boulder because, like I said, the win is one thing, but it's about putting on a, a good show and a good practice on these boulders before the IFC World Cup season starts and uh, Yanya Garnbret, opportunity to be the only climber to walk away with four tops. Vadim Timonov can go in with three tops just to the number of attempts to zone holds though. Can't beat Sergei on this one. Topishko's walked away with this one pretty early on. Yanya already has the top spot on the podium, but in true Yanya style, she will not want to go away from this competition with a boulder unclimbed. And this is the final boulder for her tour. Swiftly through to the zone for Yanya. Yanya Garnbert looking to show everybody out there what sort of fitness she's in. She's had the most spectacular season probably in IFSE history in 2019. Can she start 2020 off in a similar vein? Adam Timonov is looking good here on Number four as well as Yanya Garnbret. We've got one more move to do in this competition. Oh, holds the move whilst keeping a right foot on, levitates to the finish hold. Yanya Garnbret once again absolutely dominates the studio. Oh, that Block was Masters. amazing from Yanya Garnbret there, but did you see that stab out with the right foot from Vadim Timonov onto the base of that volume? This is a fantastic finish now. He's got all the time in the world, two minutes 50 on the clock. But he's going to go for it. He needs two hands on the top. Vadim Timonov finishes with a top on men's four at the Studio Block Masters 2020. What a fantastic finish to the competition. Great work from the route setting team. They've absolutely nailed this one. Men's boulder down on the far right hand side. Only saw one top, and ultimately that's what decided it here. Great job all the way through from the qualifiers, semi finals, and finals. I think the organizers, route setters. Hello to Studio Blockmasters 2020. Nikki here with Vadim Timonov and Sergei Topishko. We don't know yet who won, but I think it will be one of you. So cheers to you, Vadim. And uh, your beer will be open in a second. So cheers and uh, thank you so much for the show so far. What happened at boulder number four, Vadim, please? Boulder number four? I don't know, it's the devil inside me. <laughs> <laughs> How did it feel to climb onto the wave and then jump to the last hole? Perfect, the last move is so scary, uh, but only one chance. 
And what happened at boulder number three? Did you think you were able to climb it this way when you took a look at it while observing the boulder? No, we all thought that it is uh, the hardest boulder and if someone will do it, he will win. And uh, when I took the last hold, I was so surprised that I hold it actually, so I'm so happy that I did it. <laughs> What's uh, the, last, uh, l the last hold actually like? Yeah, the last hold was good, but the zone was uh, like super slippery. You can say it, it's really... And uh, to match it, it was, Im I think it was impossible to match it. That I, ju I doubled and jumped to the top. What did you think uh, while observing was the easiest boulder? Which boulder did you think you would be able to flash? First one, but it's tricky boulder, but easiest one. Yeah, first was easier. <laughs> And not boulder number three, for me it's impossible. Why? i not slab master. You can become a slab master if you want to. In the semi-final? You can be, yeah, uh, you, yeah the, the semi-final slab was quite good, huh? Mm, I'm shocked about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you have to train a little bit more on slabs. But let's come back to the... You don't need to train. He's a monster. Yeah, he, he's a monster. I've seen your Instagram uh, channel and uh, that's impressive. But uh, let's come back to Studio Blockmaster. Uh, last year you were here, you were which place? Free place and here, second place. Yeah, and I was second and he was third. And now it all comes... Battle, like who will win? Now it all comes down and uh, would, you, would you give him, like would you, would you be happy if he wins? Yeah, for sure. He's my good friend. Would you? Would you? The same, for sure. Climb together. So, so you climb and train together? Where, where do you do that? Uh, in the Rocklands, in I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes I, I come yeah, to. Okay. Cool. Thank you so much, guys, for taking the time so far. I hope we will know soon who will win this competition. I don't know. I don't know anything. So enjoy your beer. See you later on the podium, and I will continue with Janja Gambret if you don't mind. Thank you. So see you later. Thank you so much. Ooh, I'm joined here by Janja Gamret. How do you feel? Yeah, I feel great. I mean, the boulders were amazing, so I feel great. Okay, that was an easy question to enter the conversation. And which one was your favorite boulder? I think all the boulder problems were interesting. They were um, all different, all tricky, but I liked the most the last one. <laughs> it was most powerful and uh, yeah, it was a great climb. Would you always prefer powerful climbing over slab climbing, even though slab climbing can be really adventurous and really exciting? Yeah, at first I didn't like slabs, I must say, but uh, this year actually I like all of the boulder problems. I, I'm more of a powerful climber, I like more powerful uh, boulders, but still I, I like the slab in the finals, it was really nice and uh, I enjoyed all the boulders. That's good to hear. Would you have? Would you like to climb uh, the last boulder problem? Oh, I think we are done here. I think we have to celebrate your win. So thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for taking the time and enjoy uh, whatever it's called the ceremony. <laughs> Absolutely hilarious from start to finish. There can't help but smile. Studio Blockmasters is such a great atmosphere. Beers, beers, beers down the front of the wall. We're sticking to the ice waters here and coffees just <laughs> to try and keep this competition in one shape. It looks like we're going to cut straight to the wall because the presentation is underway. Yannick Floe is taking the third spot. Presented by one of the owners here, Robert Lux, the uh, third place position. Vadim Timonov is given that second position. For some reason down the front there, they didn't, they couldn't tell who had won. I think there's a bit too many beers, potentially. Definitely too much beer <laughs> flowing down there. But great to see the, uh, the bants on the screen there from uh, Vadim and Sergei. Obviously, very good friends. Love competing against each other. But it is, once again, Sergei that takes the place above Vadim. He steps onto the top step. Yeah, Sergei Petishko on that final boulder you heard. He was m most surprised, more surprised than anybody else to swim up that final boulder. Takes the 3,000 euros check. That'll go nicely. Get a few more trips to Rocklands there with his mate Vadim. That'll be very nice indeed. Great competition in the men's side. Superb boulders. Root setters have really nailed this one. 
There you have your top three, Sergei Tepishko, Vadim Timinov and Yannick Flowey. Great performance by the young Yannick there. Sorry, be happy with that. Vadim wants to go for the champagne spray. I'm not sure if it's quite that sort of beverage to be I honest. I think it's might. wine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that works. We'll just sort of just randomly throw water around. <laughs> what a waste of good bottle of wine. That might be a vintage year. Good crowd there in the house on top of the boulder. Stacked very close to the wall. A great place to view such amazing athletes. It's not often even at a World Cup. Yeah, to get that close to such an amazing set of athletes is, is superb. Well, that's it. Usually if you go to the World Cups, there is a lot of uh, coaches and physios down the front, so you don't get to witness the action so close. Third place in the women's competition, really well deserved from Luc Karakovic, two tops and three zones. And many people in the house here will be so pleased for Chloe. That injury during the semi-finals pushed through, taped up and just got on with it. Chloe Collio, two tops and four zones. She was pushing Yanya all the way to the end. Couldn't find a top on the final boulder, which gifted it to Yanya. No surprises, really, 2020 winner of the Studio Blockmasters and winner of pretty much everything going for quite a long time now. Yanya Garnbrett, she is unbelievable. She's pretty much unstoppable at the moment. And she goes into this Olympic year with a competition win already under her belt. Absolutely superb. Once again, all good friends on the podium there. So they've had an excellent competition this weekend. As have we, Michael, it's been uh, really good fun. It's definitely a fun competition, a little bit more light-hearted than some of the uh, international World Cups and World Championships. Absolutely brilliant. And the athletes, they just love it as well. And it's no surprising why this competition is so, so popular, why people are coming back year on year. 800 registered climbers for this event. Around 750 actually got amongst it. 752, because we had a go as well. <laughs> it was absolutely brilliant from, from start to finish, really.